Okay, hello everyone, thanks for coming. I'm Christophe from OK People. Um, I want to start with some tweets from Jacob, which is saying uh, if we are trying to bring product back on Cosmos. And that's a very interesting question, so let's find out. At first, I will start with myself. So I'm Christophe from OK People. Uh, there is my peer coach who will connect with me. Uh, at okay, before we are building a blockchain um, using Cosmos SDK and Cosmosm, and uh, which is um, dedicated to the orchestration of digital resources, which are off-chain, um, with regards to governance, uh, which are which are on-chain. So it's all about governance. So let's start with a short definition about governance. Uh, the governance refers to the process and system of decision making. Uh, implementation and management within an organization, a society, or a community. So, what, what do we want to achieve here? Um, we need to be able to implement governance on chain. So, if you project ourselves uh, in a decentralized and autonomous system, we want that the system guarantees that the rules are respected at any time and any place, and all magic happens on chain. How, how do we achieve that? So, the most traditional way of doing this, just to pick a language which targets postmodern, for instance, Rust, okay, and we start to Rust test because we are following the TPP principles, and then we call the test, we call the test, then we deploy and we enjoy it. So, we end the up with a smart contract uh, which implements the, the governance. So, is it okay? I don't think so because. And different governance means and different implementation, possibly using different technologies, and possibly using different uh, programming languages. And there is no strict equivalence between the rules and the code. So this is the problem, because on one side you have the governance, which are easy to read and understand, and on the other side you have the smart contract, which are quite difficult to read and understand. So we don't have the equivalence to the two. So let's find uh, another another way of uh, considering the things by making the following observation. Uh, it seems that the language in which we are expressing the governance rules are basically uh, logical by sense. So uh, we could consider using the DSL the most specific language which would be able to construe and express the governance rules uh, as a log logical language. Okay. So let's try it this way. So if we are able to design this self for this, now our job is quite simple. We just have to develop a smart contract to uh, be able to uh, interpret and evaluate with this DSL. And then we just have to change the scope, the governance into the new uh, language. Okay? So the job to write a smart contract has only been done once. And we are able to maintain the equivalence of movement between the, the governance and the rules in the month of smart contract. Okay, so it seems a good solution. But here, you have to trust me because designing a DSL is very, very difficult. Okay, so it's part of the theoretical language, the programming language. Uh, we are talking about like sense, tokens, a very different kind of uh, grammar. Uh, to, to, to consider, so it's very, very difficult to design. And the implementation is very difficult as well, because, of course, uh, it's difficult to make it work. And even there is already existing uh, a large set of tools that help us to implement such contracts. But uh, it's very difficult to target smart contracts for its uh, constraint on the So uh, we're facing the dilemma here. And uh, it seems we have only two choices. So on one hand, we have the trip my way for the way on the other side, we have the DSLs. Um, but we want to find another way, another alternative between the two. Okay, so the observation is the natural that there is already existing programming languages that are some kind of DSLs. I mean, the internal. Paradigm, which is very close to what we want to achieve here, uh, 
they said we, we want to express the rules. Uh, they're existing and the interpretation is already existing and functional. Okay, so why not use an existing language, the language, to write our work governance tools? And that's it. Okay, this is the prologue. So, prologue is a programming logic language. It's been developed in the 70s. Okay, it's really great. So, so, uh, so yes, Jacob, prologue is alive and it's already alive in Cosmos. And that's also. So, why prologue? Uh, I would say, why not? Uh, the first is the prologue's popular. Okay, so. I don't know how many of you here have already heard about Prologue. Yeah, the great. <laughs> Not that much. So, yes, it is. It's popular. In fact, it's old. Uh, and, uh, okay, all things are good things, I believe. Mm -hmm. It's like good wine. Um, no, it's a uh, product logic based for. Paradigm, uh, so it's very interesting for us because with a lot of space person we want to very easily. Uh, it's very efficient in ways that the interpreter and the evaluator is very smart in using uh, an FRS engine. Uh, it's standardized as well, so they are already existing in many different implementations uh, in different languages. By uh, the standards. And uh, last but not least, it's embeddable. So it's very interesting for us because we are able to embed a interpreter in any, almost any uh, in programming languages. So, if you have started to learn Prolog, uh, you may have faced to some very weird uh, concepts like unification, first order logic, or so on. It seems very difficult to That's don't be afraid, it's not, in fact. First of all, because we we don't want to write a full application in, uh, in color. We just want to express the development of the rules, which are just a subset, a very minimal uh, subset. And as it is a different paradigm, you have to happen this new paradigm, like you have the original programming paradigm or the object oriented paradigm. Okay, it's the same way. Here, it's a goal oriented paradigm, and once you understand it, you will find it very intuitive. Okay. Very intuitive. So, to be convinced, let, let's take a, a, a short moment to, to make a two of problems. So, basically, prop is about facts, news, and queries. So, let's hear a little bit of color code. Here, we have the most basic elements of prop, which are facts. Okay. It's just an exception of what we know about the world. So, here, we are still doing that. Alice is a member of the Council. And we also say that Bob is a member of the same okay. So it's, it's like a, a database, in fact. There's two rows, but one table with two rows and two colors. Okay, it's very simple. And now, this is where the magic happens. Uh, we introduce the concepts of rules, which is a way to combine the relationships between them. So here we introduce a predicate, which is scan boards, which will just ex express that. The condition under which someone is able to vote or not to vote. And it can be read, read as this X can vote if X is a member of the constant. It's very, very simple to understand, I guess. And finally, we have queries. This is the way we are asking questions about facts and rules to this. So here, we can be asking if X can vote, the system responds to you, because this is a fact in, in, in fact. So, and effectively, as a member of the consent can vote. And of course, we can use an, an open question. So we can ask the system under which function, under which value of the variable, uh, put a value on, the predicate can vote can be true. And the system responds by, yes, it's true, with Alice and Robert. Okay. okay. With that, let's try to uncover something more relevant and a little bit more complex. So, if we have a rule which states that a user can vote if his one balance with more than 10 nodes, so the nodes will be the relative currency of uh, tokenism of blockchain, then here we introduce a new predicate can which express the capability of someone to perform a certain action. So, here the, the subject is DID, which is decentralized identifier, 
and the action is void. So under which condition? Well, like we use a predicate result address, which is a predicate which returns true if it's like able to retrieve the account for that value. So if we have the address of the balance in the variable account, and on that account we are trying to extract the balance okay, for the human currency through the predicate bank balance. And finally, we can make the comparison okay, from the other to the system to check that the balance is effectively more than 10 nodes. Okay? So it's very readable, I guess. And the source position is quite straightforward. Okay, so if you want to get involved and if you want to better understand how I mean, we consider Perl in the KP4 blockchain, uh, if you want to understand what the real magic of uh, Perl, we have also tutorials, so you can scan this QR code and then we will be linked to the, to the tutorial. And we have a lot of uh, very interesting things about this. And we also have a Windows program. We will be the, the, the URL of the end of the presentation. And uh, yes, you can earn token by writing the uh, program, which can be cool, yes. Okay. So let's uh, let's go to the implementation side now. So we present here Perl as a Cosmos module. Okay. How, how do we do that? So we took each event Perl, which is a nobody can still interpreter and the Golang library, which is released in the open source license. Then we dock the interpreter using chain specific Perl predicates. And this is very important because we want the, the interpreter to be able to communicate with the outside with the limit of the run maps, which is uh, the different modules of the personal SDK or the smart contract. So we, we want to interact with the bank module, we are able to do that in the on chain specific Then we put a formula and get the proper interpreter for source SDK, which to be used, which to be ready to use. Okay, so it behaves like in uh, the Cosmos SDK module, so you can uh, stop a query and get a response back. And of course, uh, using the specific blockchain, uh, specific, uh, chain predicate, predicate predicate on the, on the module, we are able to interact with smart contracts, we are able to retrieve the raw state of the blockchain. So it's very interesting because if you want to know what some bonus rules which depends on the state or which depends on the response of our smart contracts, we are able to do that. Okay, so a real living example. So if you want to uh, test it, you can. So you have to download the okay for OG command online. On, uh, available on our GitHub, and then following the module and asking for something. Here we are asking to the bank balance for specific uh, wallet account, and we get a response. So it's with uh, certain quantity of uh, nodes. And what's very interesting here is the context which is provided by the response. So we have the number of gas uh, that uh, used by the, the query to perform the query. But this is very important because, of course, but I'm assuming something to the general for the interpretation of your gas. And we can set a limit that uh, the gas consume uh, to avoid the abuse of the module. Of course, if you assume it's in some different place for the for interpreter, we must have a way to stop the of the query since the query returns. And we also have the heights from the blockchain. And this is really important because, of course, the evaluation depends on the context and one thing depends on the height of the right. Of the blockchain which evolves during time. Okay, so this is the part of the Cosmos SDK module uh, released uh, on GitHub, available on the FH2 license. So if you like it, you can start it, you can contribute it, you can use it now in your blockchain if you think it's suitable for your, for your concern. You can contribute, bring some new predicates, you can also help us to improve the documentation, everything is possible. Mm -hmm. So, okay, we have a Cosmos, Cosmos is okay with you, which is fine, but why not a Cosmos was them smart in practice instead? Okay, so it's very difficult because we try to, it's not easy, but it's planned. And maybe it can be a, a very good candidate for the platform hackathon, so we have a hackathon in small, so if you want to participate, you want to write, 
According to Peter, in my announcement, I need to respond. Okay, if you want to do your right on. Okay. Uh, for now, what we have, uh, we have the graphics is fixed mark on track of So, that will be just to extract that memory. So, from your point of view as a client, uh, you just interact with the smart chain. Okay. Do you have any questions? So, here is the link for the digital program. If you want to join, read. Okay, thank you. Thank you.